Okay, tonight we have torn apart on the bench a circa 1947 GE 5-tube AM radio. It's basically the same circuit as any other AM radio, any other 5-tube AC-DC set, for the exception that this radio uses a 110-volt pilot light, while most sets use a number 47 bulb, which is a 6.3-volt lamp. Okay, let's plug it up and see what happens. Okay, we're plugged in, turned on. We have dial bulb illumination, but we appear to have no tubes lighting up. Okay, since the dial bulb is lighting, we know we're getting power to the set, obviously, and we know the off-on switch is good. So the problem, most likely, is an open tube filament. Well, no, actually it is an open tube filament because I've already done a little little pre-poking around here and I discovered that the 12SQ7 tube is open. And I'll show you a couple of ways to determine an open tube filament if you don't have a tube tester. Okay, for method number one, you'll need an ohm meter. And then you'll need to determine what pins connect to the filament of your tube under test. In this particular case it's pin 7 and 8. You can determine that from either a tube manual or looking up a tube online or from the radio schematic. And looking at the tube from the bottom you notice the keyway here. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And as you can see on the meter we have no resistance so that means we have an open tube filament. Okay, here's our good tube connected to the ohm meter, and we have 12 ohms, so that means this tube has a good filament. Okay, method number two involves the use of an AC voltmeter. Whenever I took electronics, they taught us that in a series circuit, which all of these tube filaments are wired in series, just like an old Christmas tree light string, and just like with the Christmas tree lights, when one bulb blows, everything goes because you break the circuit with the open bulb. Well, the same's true for a tube filament. Well, anyway, they taught us in electronics that uh, if you're measuring voltage across an open circuit in a series string, then you read maximum voltage across the open. Well, our line voltage is 123 volts, and we have our AC voltmeter connected across the open tube filament and when I apply power to the radio there you go 121 volts now if that tube filament was good you wouldn't receive you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't measure full line voltage so what you can either do is take a resistance measurement of each tube filament with your own meter or you can use your AC voltmeter to check across the filaments of each tube and whichever tube filament gives you maximum voltage as in line voltage across the filament then you know you found the open tube filament. Okay now let's install a good 12SQ7 and see what this radio does. And by the way we're dedicating this video to our to our old friend Shango 066 who recently had a little mishap with YouTube closing out his channel by mistake but thankfully he's back up and running again with all of his old videos intact okay here we go we have our speaker connected we have our 12 SQ7 tube in the socket let's apply power and whatever is going to happen will happen let the set warm up a minute Okay, I'm hearing some noise from the speaker. Sounds like we have a filter capacitor on its way out. I'm hearing static. Sounds like WSM is coming in. 
Let me kill the light a minute. That's not bad results for a, basically a first go. Another hard hitting battle on the gridiron just four minutes between 355 and Lakeshore Drive. Dan Ryan, you can yards and one touchdown pass from the two. Okay, so we know our electrolytic filter capacitor will need to be replaced. That's this guy right here. And I can tell it's already has already been replaced at some point in the past. No surprise there. Take nothing here in the third quarter. TSU again, not. It sounds like we're getting some distortion, but that could very well be caused by a defective speaker. Bad coupling capacitor in the audio circuit, etc., etc. So let's let's get to the bottom of that right now. Okay, it seems our audio has gone dead from the speaker, but I can faintly hear it chattering from the output transformer. Okay, let's check our control grid voltage on the 50L6 tube and see what we have. Yeah, a little bit positive. which probably means this coupling capacitor right here is a little bit leaky. Looking at the plate of the 12SQ7, which this coupling capacitor is connected to, we have about 46 volts. That's maybe a tad bit low, but shouldn't be enough to cause any problem. Okay, now let's see why the audio abruptly decided to mute itself. And since I'm hearing chatter from the audio output transformer, or at least I think that's what I'm hearing, that tells me the problem is either an open voice call on the speaker or an open secondary winding on the audio output transformer. And a quick ohm meter test will confirm which. Okay, we have our ohm meter connected across our speaker voice call. We're getting about 4 ohms, that's good. Now let's check the prime of the secondary winding of the audio output transformer. And obviously when you do this, you want to disconnect the transformer from the speaker, otherwise you'll get false readings. Okay, we're connected across the secondary of the audio output transformer, and this is not good. As you can see, we have an open circuit here. But I'm not going to uh, condemn the transformer just yet, and I'll show you why right now. Here's our audio output transformer, and if we look up the leads, you can see that they've been spliced. I don't know why some service technician didn't just unplug them from the speaker like you're supposed to. In fact, this is real loose here, so it's quite possible these connections might not be secure. So I'm going to remove this crap and check again and see how, how we are. Okay, it appears that shoddy workmanship was the problem, because you see I have the meter connected directly, and we now have a reading. So now we'll just clean this junk up, re-solder it properly, and slip some heat shrink tubing over it, and it should be good to go. Okay, here we are, soldered back together and insulated with heat shrink tubing. We have our meter connected, and as you can see, we're getting the uh, desired results now. Okay, now that that little bit of excitement is out of the way. Let's go ahead and replace that coupling capacitor in the that couples the 12SQ7 tube to the 50L6 audio output tube. Okay, there's the capacitor replaced, all nice and neat, because you know, I hate shoddy workmanship. Okay, back on the GE, I've replaced all of the old paper capacitors, which all tested leaky. As far as quality, the solar sealed tight capacitors showed the least amount of leakage, but they still were leaky. Now we're replacing this electrolytic capacitor. I'm just going to leave the original can in place, disconnected with modern 
single section capacitors wired under the chassis. I've already replaced one of the sections and before I replace the other two we'll test these original capacitors just so I can show you the defect that they have. They all have high ESR. Okay, we're set to electrolytic capacitor test. We have our range switch set to measure between 20 microfarad and 1000 microfarad and we'll turn our dial for maximum eye opening. Yeah, that's not much eye opening, is it? Now, in order to test for power factor, or ESR, we just turn this knob up and when we get maximum eye opening, that's our degree of ESR. And it's wide open. Now let's test for leakage on the 20 volt scale. Yeah, the light's staying on, so that's not good. Here's section two. It would help if I'd set this to the right position. Once again, very little eye openings. We'll raise our power factor control. Okay, this one doesn't have as much ESR as section number one, but it's still unacceptable. Not as leaky either. And section number three. And this one's maxed out as far as ESR. Now, let me show you how a brand new capacitor test. We have our power factor knob at zero. Adjust our control here for maximum eye deflection. And once again, it would help if I'd put it on the right uh, range. That looks good. Now, let's raise our power factor control. And when I raise the control, the eye closes, so that's how a capacitor is supposed to test. Now, we'll test it for leakage. Look at that. Yeah, that, that's how a good capacitor is supposed to test. Okay, we have our filter capacitors replaced. This is a little bit sloppier than I'd, I'd normally like to do, but I didn't have a whole lot of choice because there wasn't room to put the required number of terminal strips. I managed to get one terminal strip down here and have one capacitor directly soldered to it. The other capacitor, I have one leg soldered to the terminal strip and the other leg soldered to its appropriate connecting point in the circuit, but it should be okay. Okay, let's, let's fire this up and see what happens. Okay, there's WSM coming in. It's not even quite dark outside yet. And notice no filter hum. And totally cranked up, it just doesn't mean as much to our players, you know. I don't know what that is. Front gears away. Hanging, coming to the near side. Controls under it. Gets it at the 19. Point zero. He breaks the tackle on the near side. There's a flag. Community in a meaningful way. Best of all, you can take the entire family. ELP. These are the people that Dave recommends to answer you. for your listening pleasure. An employment visa. 
Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit more. Take that surplus as far as an actual community of people, and you'll start seeing the stores won't be ran by ethnic groups that come in from the outside. The blight of the neighborhoods won't be falling down. The youth development programs won't be slighted based upon the fact that nobody says they had the resources. After school programs won't, will be in abundance because the people would have the necessary resources to put the money out there. Visitation, chapel service, and graveside service all for under $5,000. Webb Funeral Home has been serving the families of this area for over 140 years. In the speaker's a little raspy. Or call UMass and say, You're like a bunch of little children. Okay, this radio seems to be working rather well. Okay, we're almost ready to call it a day with this one. I replaced the AC power cord with a polarized cord, and I wired the power switch from its original neutral side of the power line into the hot side of the power line. So it'll make this chassis a little more safe. And the speaker is eventually going to need to be replaced. I, I patched up a couple of rips in the cone, but the voice call still drags, so it's a little raspy sounding, but you don't need to see me do that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory on how to replace a speaker. But in default, can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem. <laughs> But overall, those people will chase you to the end. There's a weak station from somewhere. I think our reference station, 670, has gone off the air for today. Well, guess what just happened? The dial string broke. Isn't that just lovely? So I'm going to have to restring the dial on this set. Well, I haven't made a video since my Shango 066 video, and I've already received some messages and other inquiries about... Uh, hoping I'm not going to throw in the towel. So instead of me dragging this out, I think I'll just go ahead and post this as a video. And whenever I acquire some dial string and get a new speaker for this set, then I'll probably do a part two of this. But just to let everybody know that I'm not gone, I'm not mad, I'm not throwing in the towel, we'll just go ahead and post this portion of this and and say more to come later. I just hate restringing dials. That's the one thing about old radio repair that I absolutely despise. But I have no other choice here. I'm going to have to restring it. in a more flattering way. Look somebody in the eye. During a long car ride. Why? A re 